Mrs. Kikert. I need to move a motion of no confidence in Mr. Gentleman as the Minister for Corrections. Is leave granted? Yes. Mrs. Kikert. I move that this Assembly expresses no confidence in Mick Gentleman, MLA, as Minister for Corrections. Question is that that motion be agreed. Mrs. Kickett. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I am compelled to bring this motion before the Assembly today. The series of unfortunate events that has brought us to this point should astound anyone. I too would be stunned if I hadn't become desensitised to this government's incompetent mismanagement of the prison in the short time that I have held this portfolio. In those nine months, we have seen a multitude of failures from this minister across almost all aspects of the prison. Let me summarise the serious issues that have led to this motion of no confidence in Mick Gentleman. Over the past nine months, we have seen short staffing in the prison cause excessive lock-ins and overtime hours. We have seen two riots, a detainee mistakenly released and at large for close to a week, repeatedly, repeated delays in the rollout of an upgraded database and a $20 million bail program that housed only 44 people. There have been unclear policies, the sluggish, drafting of vitally important policies, a deferred reintegration centre, disproportionate numbers of strip searches, ma mass incarceration of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders, and recently an escape. This motion joins another expression of no confidence. After the detainee escape, the AMC staff held a vote of no confidence in a member of management. All officers on duty and roughly 30 officers who came in off shift raised their hands in favour. Clearly, I am not alone in believing that Minister Gentleman and this government are jeopardising the safety of our corrections officers through their careless management. In November 2020, the AMC experienced its first ever riot. 27 detainees aggressively confronted officers and lit multiple fires, destroying an entire accommodation unit and causing $5.7 million in property damage. The prison hasn't fully recovered. The wing can be rebuilt, but we may never know the damage inflicted on the mental health of the corrections officers. The minister's failures put officers' safety and potentially their lives on the line. As we now know, this government failed to provide adequate emergency management training in the lead up to the riot. Only 33% of the staff reported that they were familiar with AMC emergency instructions. Only 23% said that emergency instructions were clear and only a meager 9% agreed that earlier training had been effective in responding to this incident. 26% of staff stated that they had not participated. 76% uh, of staff stated that they had not participated in a training exercise for a similar incident. Lack of training re-emerged just a few days after the riot when a cottage was set ablaze, resulting in the loss of 28 beds for several weeks. One correction officer described the intensity, the intensity of the fire this way. This fire was so hot that our boots were melting to the tiles and the steel handrails radiated a frightening amount of heat along their entire length. All four officers who engaged the fire had lapsed fire refresher training. Another example of the minister putting corrections officers in harm's way. In the past month, two more incidences have eroded public confidence in the minister's ability to do his job effectively. The mistaken release of a detainee and the dangerous escape of another. On the 20th of July, Canberra residents learned that a detainee had been mistakenly released before his release date. This detainee walked free and was at large for close to a week. The government called it human error, 
Madam Speaker, I reject that claim, and here's why. Blaming human error scapegoats staff for their own failings, and I will not stand for it. Our corrections staff put themselves in harm's way on an hourly basis every single day, and it is shameful for the government to hide behind them. Responsibility for this mistaken release lies solely with Minister Gentleman and his failure to provide correction staff with appropriate tools. The government noted that information on detainees is kept on an electronic database that requires manual checks across multiple files. What was not said is that this database software was developed in 1985 and was considered antiquated when the government bought it in 2004. This database and its recording methods have been criticised since at least 2011. The Auditor General in 2015 stated that they make it difficult for correction staff to respond to requests for information on detainees and noted that officers, quote, emphasised the laborious nature of collating data using correction services record systems. The inspector reported that the current database had frustrated other reviewers going back for years. If the previous reviewers, the Auditor General and the inspector, all regard the government's record keeping system as unfit for purpose, then I rejected the government's claim human error caused the mistaken release of the detainee. Wow. Clearly, it was the minister's fault for forcing staff to rely on an antiquated system known to be flawed. An upgrade to this database was supposed to have been completed by mid-2018, but of course, this government has failed to make that happen. The next incident was more serious, placing corrections officers' lives and the general public in danger. Media outlets as far away as Illinois and Sri Lanka reported it and hundreds of social media users commented on it, making this government's humiliating prison mismanagement truly global. Returning to the AMC from the Canberra Hospital, three corrections officers in the Camry were attacked by a much larger and heavier vehicle. Taking evasive action, the officers deviated from their route, pursued the entire time. They were forced to run red lights and drive onto oncoming traffic, but the sedan was repeatedly rammed like a rag doll in the heart of our city. After a physical altercation between a correction officer and the detainee, the detainee escaped. Photos taken afterwards showed the front bumper mostly detached from the vehicle, significant crumbled damage to the right-hand side of the car, a shredded front tire, a boot that could no longer close, and a ruined rear bumper. Imagine riding in that vehicle when it was being rammed by a bigger vehicle. Most Canberrans would be unfamiliar with prison policies, but online commentary overwhelmingly stated it was obvious that a Camry was not suitable for prisoner escorts. Corrections officers also thought that using a Camry was a bad idea. Unsurprisingly, the inspector had earlier found that the Camry was, quote, unsuitable as a general use escort vehicle and was confused why an at-risk detainee could not be transported safely in a larger seat capacity vehicle that would provide more room for the detainee and a safe distancing of staff. So use of the Camry as an escort vehicle for prisoners has been unanimously declared an irresponsible decision by the public, by corrections officers, and by the inspector. Yet, the minister did not stop its usage after the inspector's review. Once again, Minister Gentleman failed to keep corrections officers safe on their job, putting their lives and the lives of community members in danger. His decision damns him. There is no one else responsible for the continued use of the Camry. The recommendations and findings came out under his watch. 
This is not the fault of the previous minister, nor is it the fault of the corrections staff. Solely it is the fault of the minister for corrections, Mick Gentleman. It is his fault. Where is his responsibility? One could wonder, is there even any point in having the minister resign from his already abandoned post? His absenteeism indicates he has already abandoned the portfolio in spirit. And perhaps not only in spirit, after assuming the corrections portfolio and insisting his predecessor did not leave the portfolio in the mess, Minister Gentleman moved quickly to establish an oversight committee for the AMC to develop a blueprint for change. At the time, I expressed the misgivings about this idea. I was concerned that it would add an additional layer of bureaucracy and slow improvements at the AMC even further. I was also concerned that the oversight committee would allow the minister to take a step back from the prison and adopt a hands-off approach. The minister's recent absence in relation to the prison indicates he is doing just that. What is the point of having a minister who passes off his responsibility to a committee? A prison is a place where a government should have the most control and the most opportunity to enact its vision. This government is failing miserably. It has no excuse and there is no outside force onto which it can shift responsibility. The buck stops with the minister and he is accountable. In, the, in his short nine months as minister, he has repeatedly placed the lives and safe corrections officers at risk. We have no confidence in him. I may be the one speaking now. I may be the one for off the more vocal critics of the minister, but I am not the only one the minister is accountable to. He is accountable to correction staff as well because they matter and their work environment matters. He owes it to them to ensure that they have a safe work environment and the opportunity to learn new skills to protect themselves. I speak now to the ACT Greens. The parliamentary agreement for the 9th Assem Legislative Assembly lays out three specific circumstances where the Greens can support a motion of no confidence. These include instances of proven corruption, gross negligence, or significant non-adherence to this agreement, or the ministerial code of conduct. In the parliamentary agreement for this assembly, the circumstances have been expanded. My hope is that this expansion occurred because the Greens members want more freedom to hold this government to account. They can support a motion of no confidence put forward by the opposition where the government engages in conduct that threatens public confidence in the integrity of the government or public administration. The failures of this minister, crowned by the very public escape of an inmate, not only constitutes gross negligence, but has threatened and does threaten public confidence in the integrity of this government and its administration of the prison. It would be hard to find anyone in Canberra who keeps a close eye on the news, who is confident that the government is effectively running the prison. The Greens are clearly within their rights to support this motion. This government must do better. And it starts with Minister Mick Gentleman divesting himself of the corrections portfolio. Madam Speaker, I commend this motion to the Assembly. Yeah. Question is the motion is agreed. Mr Gentleman. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Now, Madam Speaker, I, I have always stood up for workers and will continue to do so. I've done this across all my portfolios and took the same approach when I took over the corrections portfolio in November last year. Managing prisons in any jurisdiction in Australia is challenging. Ours is no different. And this was the clear message I received when I became Minister from the oversight bodies, from stakeholders, staff, management and the union. During my short time in my portfolio, I've met with corrections officers and staff across the entirety of ACT Corrective Services. The clear message from them to me has been one of hope. They are confident in the blueprint for change process, 
which I set up shortly after commencing in the portfolio, and have a great deal of confidence in the new Commissioner. Madam Speaker, I've heard the message of hope repeatedly, including recently at a mobile office, and this morning the CPSU texted me to again indicate their confidence that their members have in me as their Minister. We do need to support staff, and this work is underway, and I'll continue to support the Commissioner in doing this. I've also had updates on the blueprint for change process from the independent chair. She is confident and hopeful that progress is being made. As Minister, I'm also pleased to have been able to work with the Commissioner and his team to move women detainees back to their purpose-built accommodation. This was another issue raised with me when I took over the portfolio. The message of hope from staff is also echoed by stakeholders. And I acknowledge there are improvements to be made to do uh, and support detainees better, and this work is also underway. Yes, there have been incidents since last year's election, but prisons are complex and do not come without challenge. What differentiates the AMC from others is the level of oversight it has. As the Inspector of Correctional Services has remarked to me, the AMC has the most oversight of any prison in Australia. This is a good thing. It means, as Minister, I can obtain independent advice. And I've not hesitated in doing this and will continue to do so. This independent oversight provides transparency in the management of the AMC. For example, reports from the Inspector are tabled in this Assembly by you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, we must respect the independence of these oversight bodies. It's important we don't pressure or seek to sway their advice through public commentary as they undertake reviews. In the case of the escape incident on the 9th of July, the police investigation has resulted in charges being laid and the resulting matters will be before the courts. I remind members of the subjudice conventions. I also draw the Shadow Attorney General's attention to the need to ensure the proceedings before the courts are free and fair. The inspector's review will result in a government report, which as always will be tabled in the Legislative Assembly and publicly available. The government response will also be publicly available because this government is committed to transparency. Given the inspector's review and court proceedings, I have refrained from commenting. And I'm extremely conscious of the power that our words in this place can have, and I don't want to jeopardise our legal processes. However, I look forward to both publicly, uh, uh, the public proceedings, which will shed light on that incident. Madam Speaker, unlike the opposition, I will show our support for our correction staff, not only in words, but also in action. In contrast, the Shadow Minister has criticised and undermined the Blueprint for Change process, a process that is welcomed by officers and their union. Madam Speaker, let's stop this grandstanding and get on with the updates on the pandemic, housing and homelessness. Question is the motion be agreed. Mr Braddock. Thank you, Madam Speaker. <laughs> I will note Mrs Kickett was compelled to bring this motion. She seems to have been compelled to brief the Canberra Times yesterday. She seems to have been compelled, but not so far as to actually write down any details in the particular motion. It is just one line that is brought to this Assembly with no justification. It's as if the Assembly need to get the vibe of the thing, which is what I was required to do this morning from reading the Canberra Times, where she describes a number of events that have occurred not necessarily linking back to mix, sorry, Mr. Gentleman's performance as minister. Some of these events took. Some of these events occurred Mrs. Kicker, even you were before Mr. Sons. Gentleman was actually taking on the ministerial responsibility. This litany of events highlights corrections as a challenging portfolio, and any jurisdiction in Canberra is no exception. But there's no such thing as an easy portfolio for a minister. Jails are hard and horrible places. They involve the application of force and removal of freedoms on people who have history of non-compliance and violence. Being a prison guard is a difficult and stressful job, 
and I would like to thank those guards for their hard work and dedication. Yes, there are problems with the AMC. A lot of these stem from flaws in its original designs. These do not lend themselves to quick and easy fixes. They are complex and difficult to resolve. <coughs> Mr. Gentleman has explained the measures he has undertaken since taking responsibility for this portfolio, and I look forward to seeing how these measures play out. I wish Mr. Gentleman the best in this challenging role, and look forward, as the Green spokesperson for corrections, to continue and to work with Mr. Gentleman so that we can improve the outcomes for all guards and prisoners in the corrections portfolio. Therefore, the Greens do not support this motion. Thank you. The question is, members, can I just remind that this is a serious motion, one of the most serious that will get to the place. Mrs Kickett was heard in silence, and I expect all members to be heard in silence. So the question is that the motion be agreed. Ms Lee. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This motion of no confidence that Mrs Kickett brings today is about our corrections officers, our police, our ambulance and fire brigade, our detainees and our community. The Minister for Corrections has demonstrated time and time again that he is not fit to hold this ministry. Under this minister's watch, we have seen the management of our prisons go from bad to worse and from worse to untenable. The scale of this minister's failures is astonishing and it is inconceivable that this chief minister has allowed this minister to continue in his post. Headline after headline of the problems plaguing our prisons paints an alarming picture of just how bad this minister's performance is. Madam Speaker, please allow me to share just a few. Canberra Prison Riot at the AMC as disturbance prompts emergency response. Poor discipline and violence inside AMC has guards at breaking point whistleblower. Fires lit during AMC riot forces guards to use gas. Confrontation between officers and 28 prisoners at Canberra's jail. Prison riot caused by drunk inmates. Canberra prison staff angry over lack of tools and training, union says. Emergency services called to another fire at AMC, second incident in a week. Less than 10% of prison staff effectively trained to handle riot, inspector. Confusion over who is in charge at Canberra prison, report. Investigation into prison praises staff, criticises ex-commissioner, ACT, Corrective Services Commissioner, suddenly dumped from role. Ex-ACT prison boss bags $327,000 roll as riot report tabled. Canberra prison guards not respected or heard union. Guards at breaking point, whistleblower. Women forced to walk past their domestic violence, sexual assault, perpetrators at AMC. Prisoner upkeep cost in the AMC highest in the nation. Centre to help prisoners reintegrate into society failing a running joke, an AMC detainee says. Aboriginal women strip searched in view of male detainees Shame. to be probed by Human Rights Commission. ACT Indigenous women strip searched twice as often at the AMC. Prison warned Camry not fit for transport two weeks before escape. Like a Hollywood movie, women rams Jeep into police car to free inmate being transported. AMC inmate mistakenly released from jail. ACT government blames human error for mistakenly releasing prisoner. It's not sustainable. Overtime hours triple for Canberra's prison guards. Assaults on corrections officers increase fivefold. Why can't the toxic prison stay out of the news? 
Madam Speaker, the Territory's longest serving Chief Minister, Labor's own John Stanhope, has raised time and time again the significant issues with the management of our prisons. In relation to this government's rejection of our call for an independent inquiry into systemic racism earlier this year, Mr Stanhope said, and I quote, the minister, it appears, has apparently chosen to not believe the woman's claims. Claims about her treatment, including, it would seem, her belief that racism is an issue at and within the AMC. Corrections Minister, gentlemen, as spokesperson for the ALP and the Greens, has in both words and actions effectively conveyed that they don't believe her. They don't believe that she is telling the truth or alternatively, they don't think her experience or the concerns expressed by Julie Tongs and the broader Aboriginal community about the pernicious presence of institutional racism in the ACT are serious enough to warrant a detailed and independent response. Again, I assume Labor and the Greens opposed the inquiry for political reasons. They were simply not prepared to risk the Liberal Party being recognised for championing a progressive cause. The only reasonable alternative is, of course, that they don't care." End quote. Coming from the Chief Minister who opened the Alexander Macon Hay Centre in 2008, it is quite telling, Madam Speaker, that he would publish such damning comments on the performance of this minister and the actions of this government. In relation to the abhorrent regime of strip searches conducted at the ABC under the current minister, Mr Stanhope said, and I quote, of 796 occasions of women being stripped in this period, incidentally while being filmed, a total of only 12 or 0.015% were found to have contraband on their persons. In other words, in 784 of 796 searches, no contraband was discovered and the consequent trauma, humiliation and degradation suffered by the women was unwarranted and unjustifiable." End quote. Madam Speaker, if the members opposite don't want to believe us, if they don't want to believe the corrections officers, if they don't want to believe the detainees, then at least believe what our community Aboriginal elders are saying. In response to the Minister's refusal to launch an investigation into systemic racism at the AMC, Winanga Nimitajar's Julie Tongs said, and I quote, this Labor Greens government are progressive on selective issues. Unfortunately, Aboriginal disadvantage isn't one of them. It reinforces the belief across the Aboriginal community, that their concerns are not a priority with this so-called progressive government. An Aboriginal person in Canberra is 19.4 times more likely to go to prison than a non-Aboriginal person. Why would any Aboriginal person have any faith in the ACT justice system?" End quote. Madam Speaker, these are the words, the desperate words of a woman who has seen the horrendous impact of prison in our community. These are the words, the desperate words of a woman who knows this government has the power to do something and is bitterly disappointed and angry that nothing is being done. And ironically, the ACT Greens told us during the 2020 campaign that they would fight for, and I quote, the criminal justice system to respect the human rights of victims, alleged and convicted offenders, to end racism, racial bias and racial profiling across the criminal justice system, for people held in correctional facilities to be provided with a standard of care that ensures they exit detention in good health and with a reduced likelihood of reoffending." end quote. Well, Madam Speaker, they squandered the opportunity to achieve this last time. 
I urge them not to squander it today. Is this a better normal that they want to see for our city? And let's not forget that this is a minister who has allowed, through his gross negligence and lack of care, for our corrections officers to come into harm's way. The same minister who has the responsibility to support and protect our workers in this city. This is untenable. Madam Speaker, Mr Braddock talked about the difficulties with managing prisons, that they are difficult places. That doesn't give this minister an excuse not to step up. In fact, it is incumbent on him to take further steps, extra care and extra duty to make sure that our detainees, that our corrections officers and our community are kept safe. I commend Mrs Kickett's motion to the Assembly. The minister's record speaks for itself and, it mu and he must go. Mm -hmm. The question is... The motion be agreed. Mr Barr. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, the government will not be supporting the no confidence motion uh, outlined uh, by the Shadow Minister. And I want to take the opportunity to express my strong support for Minister Gentleman and the work that he is undertaking in the corrections portfolio. Minister Gentleman brings experience, compassion and a desire to work with key stakeholders to implement a series of changes within the portfolio. He brings goodwill, a strong progressive commitment to reform and the capacity to deliver change. And he does so in a measured and inclusive way. Why he has been a minister across many different portfolios in this place for many, many years. He is experienced. He works well with the ACT Public Service and with stakeholders. And I think anyone who has witnessed his work over many years would appreciate that style and that approach. The sort of measured ministerial role you want in a portfolio as challenging as corrections. And it stands in marked contrast, Madam Speaker, to what we've witnessed this morning. This is a difficult and challenging area, but I don't think anyone in the community would doubt Minister Gentleman's commitment as a representative, a long-standing representative in this place, and as a diligent and engaged minister. Upon taking the portfolio, he's put in place a range of mechanisms and measures to engage with the key stakeholders to deliver a blueprint for change. And he is implementing those reforms. So what we have witnessed this morning, Madam Speaker, is opposition for opposition's sake, the sort of standard negativity, the sort of standard negativity that you get from a long-term opposition, bereft of any new ideas of their own, Madam Speaker, and an opportunity, seeking an opportunity to grandstand and score political points of a dedicated and engaged minister. Mr. Gentleman is undertaking a series of difficult reforms, but he has the full support of his colleagues in order to achieve that. And I want to thank him for that work and have a very clear understanding of the challenges associated with delivering it. But I'm confident that he will be able to do so with the goodwill and in partnership with the key stakeholders. That's what's needed now. Not shouty, negative opposition hubbub for the sake of it, Madam Speaker, which is what we see a lot of from the Shadow Minister. We will not be supporting this no confidence motion. Question is the motion be agreed. Mr Rattenbury. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. As Mr Braddock has outlined, the ACT Greens will not be supporting this no confidence motion today. We do not believe it is warranted 
and we have confidence in Mr Gentleman as the Minister for Corrections. Uh, as he himself outlined, this is a challenging portfolio and uh, I think I feel well placed to make that observation. Corrections is a difficult space. We have people who don't want to be there uh, in custody, who undertake a range of behaviours uh, that we need to uh, put in place the systems to deal with. Now, Mr Gentleman has outlined his focus on improvement for the AMC. Just as when I took the portfolio, there were challenges in the space, Mr Gentleman has also come into the portfolio with issues that need to be resolved. The AMC has been on a process of improvement since it was opened. We still have, compared to places like New South Wales and Victoria, a relatively young correction system. We don't have the century or so of processes built up and systems in place, but I think the ACT correction system has made significant steps in the 12 years or so that the AMC has been open. And I know that Minister General is, is committed to continuing that journey of making sure that we have a high standard, safe, rehabilitative correction system here in the ACT. Now, it's been noted this morning that the ACT has one of the most transparent correction systems in the country. And I think that's a good reflection on our jurisdiction. Mechanisms like the Inspector for Correctional Services mean that members of this place probably know more about the ACT's correction system than any other member of parliament in Australia. And that is a good thing. It is better that these things are out there. And I think our community benefits from that as well in both understanding the complexity of dealing with the correction system, but also uh, knowing what the government needs to do to continue to improve it. Well, I know that Minister Gentleman is committed to working for better outcomes, both for the detainees and for staff. Because that's both sides of the equation we need to really focus on in these discussions. We've got two really important sets of stakeholders here. And at the end of the day, the biggest set of people we have in mind is the community, because if we run a good correction system, the community as a whole will be safer. I'm certainly committed to working with Minister Gentleman for better justice outcomes overall. It's not just about the jail, it's about thinking about how do we invest right through the justice systems to make this community as safe as possible. But in terms of today's motion, we have not heard anything from the opposition which supports their motion. What we've heard... <laughs> what we have heard... <laughs> Members. What we've heard is a series of slights that, that are about the challenges that do arise in the correction system. This is not some fantasy world that the Liberal Party is trying to describe. These things do happen. The question is what the Minister does to respond to it. And I have confidence the Minister Gentleman is taking the right steps to continue to drive the improvement we need to see in our correction system a journey we have been on over an extended period of time to get to the best place we can be with our correction system. And I will, as I say, the Greens will support him to achieve those steps. Uh, we will not be supporting the motion today. Question is the motion be agreed? Mrs Jones. I thank you, Madam Speaker. It's astounding that Minister Rattenbury would get up in this place and defend this portfolio when he was the minister who for many years created the mess that we're in today. Unfortunately, nothing that Minister Gentleman has done in the meantime has changed the game significantly. As a result, we have no confidence in Minister Gentleman. At least Mr Barr has accepted that there is a problem. That's the first time in this place somebody has come in here in a debate and accepted that there is actually a problem. He defended Mr Gentleman's ability to resolve the problem. Nonetheless, we at least are at the point now where there is acceptance from the government, begrudging final acceptance that there is a problem. There has been a problem for a number of years. Mr Rattenbury has no right to defend the minister when he was the minister and now sits in the cabinet that's overseen this nonsense. The people of the ACT don't need to be made to feel stupid by Minister Rattenbury when they come to us laughing and absolutely shocked that a Jeep ramming a Camry has become the biggest joke in this city over the last two weeks. That is the discussion in supermarkets, 
that is the discussion outside schools, that is the discussion in people's kitchens. Can you believe it? We have become the mockery of the entire country and rightly deserved because despite what the minister says about us having the greatest oversight of any government of our prisons, the things that the inspector says are not implemented. That is the problem here. We have known that the Camry was not acceptable and yet nothing has been done to change that. And nothing that any minister has come here today has to say has made us believe that anything is being done to resolve that problem before this escape occurred. Why is it that that Camry was still being used? Why is it that a database decided in 1985 that requires people to check multiple platforms after 12 years of the prison operating is still operating? What changed after the last time a prisoner was accidentally let go home? Why was the prisoner then told to please hand himself in? Someone who'd been denied bail. What took so long? Took him a week to be then finally escorted back to the prison. We have had a state of emergency last term in the prison and nothing that Minister Gentleman has done has genuinely changed the fear that officers have and have had for many years that the prison is a tinderbox ready to explode. That inmates have far too much power in that place and that it, there is not an appropriate regime, there is not an appropriate order, that there are too many opportunities for people to take illicit substances, harm each other, harm themselves, and that there are more things that can be done about it. I spent years in this place making suggestions to Minister Rattenbury about things that could actually be done to improve the situation with sharp implements, with lighters, with um, Guards feeling completely like they are being abandoned by this government in a very difficult workplace. I have met with more than one prison guard who over the period of the 12 years that this government has been in charge of that prison have actually started to break down mentally because of their experiences at work. It is just untenable that the Chief Minister and that Minister Rattenbury and that the whole cabinet here as well as the crossbench from the Greens will stand up and back in this minister who has not made enough changes since taking over to give anybody the impression that things are turning around. What a joke. What an absolute joke. Transparency is good and complexity is used here far too often as an excuse. Nobody sits around in Canberra saying, oh, it must be very simple to run a prison. It must be greatly simple to run a hospital. That is not the argument that's being put by any reasonable member of the community. However, it is your job to run it. It is your job as the Cabinet. It is Minister Gentleman's job as the Minister for this area to change so that we can actually see an end to these problems. There are very minimal changes that have occurred since he started. At the very least, I support the move of the women, and that should have happened years ago. But it is too little, too slow, people are being harmed, officers' livelihoods are on the line because they may not actually be able to work anymore after being in these stressful situations. People's psychological state can only handle so much distress, so much intimidation, so much trauma before they actually start breaking down. And these are tough people who have put themselves on the line week after week, year after year in our correction system as officers. And if we don't treat them with the respect that they deserve of a safe and reasonable work environment, then we do not deserve to be here. And Minister Gentleman does not deserve to be here because there are still grave safety issues. There are still training deficiencies. The prison is still a tinderbox and they go to work afraid. And any of us who have family, who have worn a uniform to a difficult job at work know that eventually when the psychological state of our ACT government employees start to break down, that needs to be put fairly at the feet of the Minister. In this case, Minister Gentleman has not acted fast enough to change what at least we now have as an agreed position that the prison has a lot of problems. Can't blame anybody else can't say that it's okay, it's not okay. 
And I would like to see a much swifter change so that we don't see prisoners escaping and being let out on the loose when they shouldn't be, and where we can actually see a change enough in that prison system so that there is a daily program so that people are not bored, so we can start to address the fact that they all have lighters, so that they do not have sharp implements to harm each other with, and so that they are not bored all the time, which has been a problem ever since that facility opened. Money flows too freely around there and there are drug problems, as min the Minister well knows. He has not convinced us, all the Canberra people, that he is addressing this appropriately or fast enough and therefore he should go. Yeah. Yeah. Question is the motion be agreed. Thank you, Madam Ms. Speaker, Perry. and I want to um, speak briefly on uh, this motion and uh, extend my support to my colleague, Mick Gentleman, who, who I've known for a number of years before coming into this place, and I know of his care and his uh, careful consideration in roles like this one, and it's why he put his hand up to be the Minister for Corrections in the ACT, because he has a, a dedication to that job and to the corrections officers, as well as the detainees. So much so, Madam Speaker, that a couple of weeks ago, after the uh, well-known incidences that have been discussed in this place occurred, Minister Gentleman and I uh, visited the AMC, and Minister Gentleman spent that time talking to as many of correctional officers as possible, listening to them about their concerns, and, uh, and trying his very hardest to extend some hope to those correctional officers rather than coming in here and making a huge fuss about something that needed a dedicated minister to start paying attention to those correction officers in the way that Mick Gentleman did. And so I support him for that work. And while we were in there, Minister Gentleman and I went and spoke to the female uh, detainees who, un under Mr. Minister Gentleman's uh, role, leadership, has moved from uh, to the... Uh, the specially purpose-built women's care centre accommodation facility. And we got to speak to and listen to the uh, female detainees about their experiences, of course, understanding very clearly that they have experienced complex trauma, family and sexual assaults, as well as coming from complex and complicated lives. Uh, Minister Gentleman's uh, caring nature in that environment was well felt by the, uh, by the female detainees and they were grateful for his visit to talking to them and listening to their concerns as well. In addition to that, working with Minister Gentleman in his role as Minister for Corrections, I've been able to extend the Women's Return to Work grants to the detainees in the AMC, female detainees, and we got to speak to and hear from one of the female detainees who had been a successful applicant of that grant and how she'd had used that grant to further her education for uh, employment when she's able to um, return to the community after her time in the AMC. And her, she was eternally grateful for the support that Minister Gentleman and I had provided through that return to, uh, return to work grant and how that could possibly extend, be extended to other female detainees. And Minister Gentleman and I and will work on that process to ensure that female detainees can get the uh, work experience and training that they need so that when they do return to community that they can stay uh, in community and out of the justice system. Finally, Minister Gentleman also uh, developed a new women offenders framework, which is ensuring that staff with the best are uh, provided with the best practice principles to better support female detainees at the Alexander McConnickley Centre. So uh, in a very short period of time, my experience of working with Minister Gentle in, this, in, as, in his role as Corrections Minister has been forthright, has been caring and has been considerate in how he has worked with the female detainees, with my office and the Office for Women, but importantly providing corrections officers in that place a, a, some hope that, uh, that he will work with them and with their union, the CPSU, which he described this morning, uh, that they had sent him a text of their support and confidence in him and in that role as well. So in that vein, Madam uh, Speaker, of course, we don't support the motion today. question is that the motion be agreed. To close, Mrs Kickett. Yes, Madam Speaker. Thank you. In response to McGentleman, how he says that he's always step up for our workers, if that was the case, if that was correct, he would not allow the corrections officers to use an unsuitable vehicle 
He would give training to corrections officers so they are prepared for riots. He is not stepping up for our workers. What he is doing currently is that he's waking up from his sleep as a minister for corrections in the nine months. That's what you're doing. You're not stepping up. You are waking up from your sleepy sleep. The minister also met with the staff and he commented on the message of hope. Let me reassure you that the message of hope is for you to step down as a minister of corrections. The AMC you mentioned has an independent oversight body is because you cannot implement a very simple... Ms. Discussions on motions in the assembly are to be directed to the chair and not to the minister. It's through the chair. Thank you, Mrs. Kicker. Yes, thank you. My apology. Um, chair, as the Minister of Corrections has mentioned, that the AMC has independent oversight body. It is because the minister cannot implement a simple recommendation, such as providing adequate emergency training for our corrections officers. Yeah. He needs training wheels in the oversight committee to tell him that here, Mr. Gentleman, it says in the recommendation to provide training for the corrections officers, please do it. That's not an experienced minister's attitude. That is an attitude of an inexperienced, sleepy minister. The minister also ref uh, refers to, ref he refrained from commenting on a serious event. This is a sign of his weakness and uselessness of a minister. That is not how an adult works in the real world when a serious incident happens under his watch. His behavior is immature and he is not fit to be the Minister of Corrections. And in response to the Greens uh, spokesperson for the corrections, Andrew Braddock, just go back and read my speech and be educated on why this is a motion that is valid. The Chief Minister talks about political points. This is not about political points. This is about doing the right thing. The right thing for our corrections officers. The government has been in government for so long that they are blinded and are fixated on their mismanagement that they think all is well, that they think it is good. That is not reality. They have demonstrated that even though they have been in government for years, they are still babies on a dummy that doesn't know how to govern a prison. And when you can't govern a prison, you can't govern a territory. So this motion that I have brought to the assembly today is long overdue. Some may say that Mr. Gentleman has only held the portfolio for less than a year and that many of the literal fires he has had to put out were ultimately the fault of Mr. Rattenbury. I say that the years long failings of the AMC are the responsibility of the entire government. Since the opening of the prison, the, this government has flopped and stumbled its way from crisis to crisis. And its response to its errors in the past has been the same as it was today. To dodge responsibility, to pass it on to someone else. When will this government take responsibility for the sad state of our prison? This motion may have been defeated but it still served at least one purpose, to ensure that this government knows that we in the opposition and the people of Canberra have no confidence in the minister, in minister gentleman, and that his miserable management of the AMC will no longer be tolerated. The government's failings are no longer contained to the prison, where the government can hope that fences will hide the problems within. Its failings were in full view on the 9th of July, all over Oxley Street, Hindmarsh Drive and Canberra Avenue. And let's not forget the previous escapes from the prison of two detainees in 2016, one of whom was at large for eight days. I am disappointed that this motion was not supported by the Greens, who continue to show themselves as spineless, useless MLAs. I know I am joined by many Canberrans who were hoping the Greens would actively condemn government shortcomings and not just blow hot air. 
Unfortunately, the so-called cross bench have showed themselves only capable of crossing the Canberras who had a silver of hope that they would use their influence to hold the government to account. I want to mention a group that I think are often forgotten. Minister Gentleman is accountable to officers' families and loved ones. Everyone who goes to work has the right to come home safely. Corrections officers have the right to know that when they say goodbye to their loved ones, they will see them home safe again. The minister disrespects these families by not placing the safety of their loved ones as a priority. I worry for our corrections officers and the staff at the AMC who must continue to endure a government that does not put their safety first and doesn't appreciate the work they do. I wish for them to know that I will continue as well as my colleagues with the Canberra Liberals to have their backs and listen to their concerns. I also worry for the safety of our community. It is not just detainee escapes that endanger Canberrans, but also the failings of this government to rehabilitate detainees and prevent further reoffending. To Canberrans, I say the Canberra Liberals are the only party that will, mean, that will take meaningful actions to hold this government to account and to improve community safety. Thank you. Yeah. The question is that the motion, Mrs. Kicketts, be agreed. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Those who say no. Aye. The noes have it. Division required, ring the bells. There is a pair in place. Uh, Miss Lauder and... I would say all those are present are present. Lock the doors. So, members, the question before you is that Miss Kickett's um, motion of no confidence be agreed, and I'll call the clerk. Mr. Barr? No. Ms. Berry? Mr. Braddock? No. Ms. Birch? No. Mr. Kane? Aye. Ms. Castley? Ms. Chain? No. Ms. Clay? No. Ms. Davidson? Mr. Davis? No. Mr. Gentleman? No. Mr. Hanson? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mrs. Kickett? Yes. Ms. Lauder? Ms. Lee? Yes. Mr. Milligan? Yes. Ms. Orr? No. Mr. Parton? Yes. Dr. Patterson? No. Mr. Patterson? No. Mr. Rattenbury? No. Mr. Steele? No. Ms. Stephen Smith? No. Ms. Vazzarotti? No. The result of the divisions are ayes 8, noes 15, therefore it's resolved in the negative. Thank you, members. I'll call the clerk and we'll move to petitions. Uh, Mr. Madam Hansen. Madam Speaker, uh, I move the leave of absence for Ms. Lauder for this sitting week for personal reasons. Question is the absence for Ms. Lauder be agreed? Those of that opinion say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Thank you, Mr. Hanson. Now I'll call the clerk for petitions. <laughs> 